Welcome back. You're listening to the panel discussion, Modernizing Federal Networks, sponsored by CenturyLink on Federal News Network. I'm your host, Jason Miller. My guest today, Alan Hill, the Director of the Office of Telecommunications at the General Services Administration. Howard Spira, the Chief Information Officer at the Export-Import Bank. Chez Sigvananam, the Chief Enterprise Architect at the National Science Foundation. And Zain Ahmed, the Vice President and General Manager for Civilian Sales at CenturyLink. Now, just before break, we talked a little bit about the, the, this idea of SD-WAN and, and how it's playing more into this network modernization. Both uh, Alan mentioned it and, and Zane mentioned it, is growing use of it and, and the potential of it. So Zane, let me start with you and, and just talk a little bit about SD-WAN and what you're starting to see, the requests you're seeing from agencies and why it's important now more than ever. So I'll use Department of Interior as a kind of flagpole where people should be looking at because they, truly embrace the need for modernization. They, they, they looked at it, said, said our requirements are gonna evolve over time. We're gonna look to scale faster, grow faster, be able to provide more services uh, to the rural areas too where bandwidth is a little challenging. And how do you do that it, it, it is layer on some technology that helps you prioritize traffic. Um, I think SDVAN is a good building block. The other pieces of the pie that are starting to show up are network functional virtualization as well. Um, especially given COVID-19, uh, where when we can't even get to our um, sites and there's a touch aspect of it sometimes that is required, field dispatch is required, um, NFV and SD-WAN combined together provide you the ability to scale faster, even deploy software um, from your central hub. So, and you have a controller that controls everything and you can deploy within a within couple of minutes or a couple of hours um, and scale much better to a rapidly changing environment. And we continue to see technology evolve at a pace that's far greater than uh, our ability to kind of work through the change itself. Um, so having your infrastructure ready, your foundation laid out right, um, making sure your security aspect of it is intertwined with how you design your network is far more critical than ever before. You know, the days of 2.2 are, are coming to an end soon. And what we're seeing evolving from a that perspective, um, we, we had conversations with our customers around TIC3 autopilots. Um, with COVID-19 evolving, they're, they're asking for, let's go into production now. And uh, what helps that? Having a cloud strategy behind your solutions, uh, we can scale, evolve faster, and respond to our customers a lot faster. You make a good point about evolving and scale to the customers faster. Alan, that's one thing about the EIS contract. That's one thing that GSA is really trying to promote is it's not just this, hey, turn on a circuit, turn off a circuit, but hey, you got to add more circuits. Hey, it's just, a, it's, it's quick, it's easy, hopefully, and, and not too expensive. Yes, uh, thank you, Jason. Uh, yes, on uh, SD-WAN has been a game changer technology for the enterprise. On EIS specifically, there have been 27 solicitations that have uh, where the agencies have requested SD-WAN. In addition, uh, other agencies have left the latitude for the vendors to offer SD-WAN uh, without specifically calling out requirements for SD-WAN. Uh, in September 2019, the Small Business Administration in, awarded a task order where they're converting their MPLS network to an SD-WAN uh, network. What's important about that, it, it, the type of technology that SD-WAN offer is what is leveraged in the cloud and it provides applications in a more efficient manner to, uh, to a more uh, broader surface network to where you're not going through the traditional TIC 2.0 type environment and, and bottleneck. Uh, it, and on top of that, what Zane talked about, the importance of, of taking TIC 3.0 and applying that so that you're not going through those bottlenecks and having applications delivered in a secure fashion to the end user in, 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 a, in a much uh, agile way and be able to scale up and scale down based on your needs. And that's an important aspect of being able to do. And COVID-19 kind of brought out the skeletons of how uh, our federal networks are not agile. And we need to move to that agile framework to where um, network as a service so that, for example, when you're having a, a large staff that needs to telework from home, allowing the vendors to go through that process of upscaling to that capability without the contract mechanisms being in place and, and uh, the national procurement type cycles to go with the logistics and all that. 
the vendors can be much more responsive in providing those service and move into a more consumption model where network as a service is consumption model, SD-WAN would fall uh, in line with that along with tic 3 and, and zero trust and being able to move to a more consumption model and be able to meet the demands of the business applications uh, for the customers. The key to that, what you said, a lot of it was the consumption model. And I think that's what we're starting to see now. Um, Howard or Ches, let me bring you guys into the discussion as well. Uh, the, that consumption model, is that starting to be a concern for you guys as COVID-19, as people work from home? How, how are you dealing with that? Maybe Howard start and then let's, let's go to Ches. Sure. Well, I think one of the first things uh, uh, we recognize is, is the agility of, of uh, these software-defined networks is has been uh, critical in, in terms of our COVID-19 response. Um, and at the same time, though, uh, as we started to get into this space, not only on the network side, but on the, uh, in the cloud side, um, we know that we're on consumption-based models. And so we have protocols for managing uh, uh, and monitoring our consumption relative to our, uh, 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 our financial forecast baselines. And, and we recognized very quickly that, that we were having a, a huge shift in the baseline. So our, uh, uh, our administrative team um, within the office of the CIO has been working very closely uh, with our uh, networks and infrastructure team to update our uh, baselines. And we think last week is, uh, or I'm sorry, this week probably represents uh, probably the best indication of what we think uh, a good reforecast would be based on and ensuring that in conjunction with our procurement team and our chief financial officer, that we can um, fund, uh, at least for, for us, what represents um, a, a significant uptick in, uh, in consumption relative to uh, where we had um, initially forecast the year to be at. Does that concern you when you see, because you, you budgeted for, and I'll make this up, you know, a million dollars and now you're spending $2 million. Is, is that a big concern? Do you work? Uh, to how, how to turn down consumption, how to, how to mitigate some of those risks of consumption? Sure. Um, I mean, one of the things that, that, that we did, and like I said, you know, on these, um, uh, between cloud and, and the network, the monitoring and telemetry we have is, is really incredible relative to uh, uh, where we were um, uh, five years ago. So, um, so one of the things that, that we did is when we saw a lot of the utilization going up, we have the kind of telemetry and analysis to uh, look into that traffic and say, what's it really about? And then actually issue guidance to, um, uh, to the bank staff to uh, um, uh, change certain habits. So for example, we just uh, happened to notice that we had um, uh, some congressional hearings involving the Export Import Bank that were happening coincident with uh, the shift to, uh, to telework. And people on-prem were used to watching it through something we call XMTV. And uh, we were able to isolate on that type of traffic and request that staff that were now teleworking watch TV through their television, as opposed to trying to draw it through uh, our, our network where we were punching uh, 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 a, a level of traffic that, that had we not been able to analyze that and make that advice, we actually would have had to um, uh, dial up uh, the amount of bandwidth on order and stay within our current capability. In certain areas, particularly in the uh, uh, Office 365, we're buying a lot more minutes uh, related to our M365 contract and people uh, uh, who, uh, are, uh, who don't have really great um, internet service and are using, uh, having, the, uh, uh, the Microsoft service actually um, use the, uh, e either a mobile phone or a, uh, or a landline as the audio channel on a, um, uh, you know, in a, in, a, in a conference call. So, um, uh, uh, so in one case we were able to uh, mitigate and, and stay uh, sort of uh, within uh, our, uh, uh, our estimate because we had the analytical uh, capability. And in another case, um, you know, we uh, uh, added it up, uh, developed the forecast, and we've had uh, working with CFO and our procurement team uh, had dollars added to the contract. Before I go to Ches, Zane, just jump in real quick. Are you getting a lot of agencies who are worried about that consumption model? We hear that 
oh, let's move to the consumption model. But it sounds like someone like Howard goes, we're there. And boy, sometimes it's, it's a little scary. Yeah, and, and, and planning for it, it's just some, something like COVID-19 you can never plan for. It shows up in your world very differently. Uh, I think uh, having an OPEX view of the world and consumption-based model saves you from having those spikes when you have to have capital infused into your world every three, four years from a technology re refresh perspective. We've seen that play out at Department of Homeland Security where we provide land managed services for them. And uh, it provides a stable work environment where as you flex, as you grow, you, you use more service and pay for it. And as, if you go down, you go down and, uh, and don't pay for those services. So it, it does provide benefit for the taxpayer themselves, as well as, um, I mean, how you get operationalized and continue to have technology refreshes show up uh, without having to plan for that capital spend that comes with it. Um, one of the uh, things Howard was talking about was um, uh, we've seen a lot of spike in legacy products that we use, uh, like audio conferencing. Um, those bridges that never get to get, never got used that much, uh, we saw uh, almost two, two to three x surge in that happen in our marketplace, and we had to scale it accordingly because th those are legacy products that we're, we're using. But um, all of a sudden, they're they're in high demand, and people want um, want to utilize those. So having the ability to, to provide those. Um, and there's choke points, as Howard was mentioning, like the cell towers, when you're using a cell phone from home, it's not planned for that, or your CEO might have too many concurrent calls. So locally, you might get choked out even getting to the um, bridge itself to get connected. So all those things are playing, um, but I think uh, everyone is working together to solve that, and it's stabilizing. We start to see it stabilize now. Um, so we'll continue to monitor and uh, work through whatever challenges come our way. Chaz, jump in here too. Let's play off of what, what you heard from Howard and, and, and Zane and Alan a little bit about not just SD-WAN, but this as a service, the cloud model. How is the National Science Foundation kind of taking advantage of the, the cloud and consumption-based model? Sure, thank you. So um, before I start, a few words about SD-WAN. So we are a single location, single network, so we don't have really a lot of use cases to segment our network and play with. So that's uh, it's, uh, very straightforward. So we don't really... Uh, look at that as an immediate need. However, uh, there's a lot of talk about TIC 3.0. So uh, I want to chime in a little bit uh, given the situation with, uh, here with COVID-19. So uh, today we are uh, leveraging TIC 2.0 and uh, the TIC 2.0 is network centric model, right? So um, with the situation given like, uh, I know we have to force our, we have a lot of great capabilities uh, uh, for our remote users. So you know, we have a laptop uh, given should everybody, we have great sort of collaboration tools uh, and uh, you know, we are very mobile friendly. So we are great, right? But what happens is because of this uh, TIC 2.0 thing, we make everybody to go through our uh, VPN infrastructure right and uh, we closely watch our bandwidth and uh, there is a limitation uh, with what we have and for example we have this impacts the customer experience right because we're asking people to not stream videos uh, you know uh, don't use uh, social media those kind of things and also uh, in an emergency situation like this we had to turn on capabilities on demand basis like you know we had to turn on Microsoft Teams, we had to turn on Zoom, those kind of things, right? So the, the problem with the 2.0 model is the, and the, the it is network centric and uh, it, it takes a lot of resources and we have to deal with these things. The 3.0 capability is a data centric approach, which is, um, which is a, a great model and we wanted that yesterday actually. Um, so, and we look forward for the new EIS uh, to bring those capabilities and make, them, make, a, make it available for agencies like us. So we can turn on capabilities on demand basis. And we are looking, I mean, we are looking at in the future enabling our systems with intelligence, right? Uh, the mission system. So, you know, we need a capability like where we run a, a service on one cloud provider and we want to turn on an algorithm and quickly plug in that algorithm into the uh, service that we are using uh, running in a uh, you know, uh, provider one. And th these kind of capabilities can only be made available with the TIC 3.0 data centric cybersecurity architecture. Uh, and we really uh, are looking forward to do that. I keep hearing this TIC 3.0 thing. I love talking about TIC. We're gonna do that in the next segment because we're just about out of time. But before we uh, end this segment, uh, let me just bring back around to Alan for a second. <clears throat> 
Alan, when, when these, the consumption model, is that something that EIS can support? I'm going to say yes, of course it can, but talk a little bit about how it can support it. And then are you, do agencies get that? Because I think that's the key here. Can, do they understand how it works? Thank you, Jason. Uh, yeah, so for example, infrastructure as a service is one of the services provided on EIS. That is a consumption model, cloud-based type framework that is available on EIS. Network as a service is another way that, uh, that uh, can be provided on EIS so that a, a agency, what typically an agency looks at is buying the components, the software, the security and all that, where if you have it all in, uh, uh, bundled together, uh, no different than what you do with your, your, your phones, it's all uh, uh, bundled together in terms of how you get the services. Uh, Howard touched on the, the importance of being on the monitor. I, I look at it from perspective though, in, in contracts, we have cost plus fixed fee type contracts. You know, Those are all, again, really technically a consumption model. It's cost plus. And so you're, 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 you're really are in the framework already. It's just a matter of, of adjusting how you budget and manage it in a much more close fashion. When you go out and you say you need like 5,000 VPN licenses, you're paying for 5,000 VPN license, but maybe you're only using 3,000 in a particular period of time, but you're still paying for 5,000 licenses. Why be concerned with the licenses, the security and all that if you scaling up and down? I, and I think Howard brought a great approach of looking at it from looking at the model and of what you're currently using and being able to provide guidelines out of agent uh, to, to consumers that when they're using too much, and it's not, there's not the business case. There's a lot of the technology that we don't have implemented in our infrastructure, for example, SD-WAN, can greatly reduce the cost of the infrastructure and allow a lot more value in terms of how things are delivered in the consumption model. All right, those are the two things we're gonna address in that next segment, security, TIC 3.0, and then the value of SD-WAN and, and moving to a modernized network. But first, let's take a quick break. You're listening to the panel discussion, Modernizing Federal Networks, sponsored by CenturyLink on Federal News Network. <laughs> 